Okay, so right now we have a we have a column and it's going to the left. But what if we want multiple columns going to the left? So one way I could do it is by just I could just hit Control D on the keyboard and create many copies of the column. But an easier way to do this manually is to actually go to our project. We will go to our assets and right click here and we'll create a new folder and we'll call this folder prefabs and just click here in the prefabs folder. And what we can do is that we can drag this column. So drag the, the object to the prefabs folder. And now you will see that it turns blue. So this is because this column has converted itself to an instance of a prefab. And what is a prefab? Well, a prefab stands for prefabricated object. So when I drag the column to here, to the prefabs folder, I created a prefab. This means that now I can go ahead and delete this column. And now I have my prefab here in the prefabs folder. So I, I can just drag this column to the hierarchy as many times as I want. And I can create as many copies as I want manually. So you can see that we have three different columns and I can position them however I want to in the scene. And we can play the game. And you can see that we have three different columns like this. They are not very well arranged, but we have three different columns. But we want to do the same thing, but we don't want to do it manually. We want to do it from the script when we start the game, right? So let's get rid of the columns. We can get rid of the columns. So what, what I'm going to do right now is that we're going to create a new object called col column spawner, okay? So right click, create empty, and let's rename this object to column spawner. Spawner, like this. Let's reset the transform. And now we have an empty object. And what we're going to do is that we're going to create a new script for this empty object. So let's go to scripts, right click, create C sharp script, and let's call the script column spawner, like this. And now if we can we can select the column spawner, we can add the component, click here, add component, and select column spawner. And now let's open the column spawner in Visual Studio. So now what we want to have in this script is that we need a reference. We need a reference to the prefab, to this prefabricated object. So how do we do this? We say here, public game object, column prefab, like this. So this will be a reference to the, to the prefab. And here in the start of the game, we want to spawn a column, right? And here in the update method, we want to spawn columns, columns every X amount of seconds. So now we need to define the functionality to spawn a column. So to do this, we're going to go and after the update method here, we're going to, we're going to define a new method. We're going to call this method void spawn column. And we're going to just, this is a method It's going to be of type void because it's not going to return anything and it doesn't, it's not going to receive any parameters. So that's why uh, the brackets, there's nothing inside these brackets. It's, it's empty. Okay. So inside here, we're going to say game object, new column. So we're creating a variable of type game object and we're, this is the name of the variable new column, and it's going to be equal to instantiate. So instantiate means make copy of. So we're making a copy of, we're going to want to make a copy of this column prefab. So instantiate column prefab like this. Now that we made a copy, we create a copy. What we're going to do is that we're going to set the transform.position of this copy. And what we want to do, if you select the column spawner, we can see that the column spawner is at position 00, zero but we can drag the column spawner here to the right. And here we can see that this is our column spawner, but if I hit anywhere here, if I click anywhere else in the scene, we can see that we can no longer see the column spawner. So to be able to see, to always see the column spawner, what we can do is that select, we can select the column spawner, go here in the inspector, click this a cube over here, and we can click this diamond, for example. And now this diamond is going to be where our column spawner is. So if I click anywhere, anywhere else in the scene, you can now see where the column spawner is. So let's track. Let's create a, a prefab of the column here. And here you can see that this is our column. So we want our column to be spawned at this position. So we want the column to be spawned at the position X of the column spawner. And we want a random position for the Y because we don't want the Y position to always, always be this position. Sometimes it will be this position. Sometimes it will be this position, this position, right? We want a random, a random value for the Y component of the position of the column. Okay, so now that we know this, let's try to figure out what would be the correct uh, Y position. So you can see here that 
in the inspector we have the y position of the column so maybe we could set 2.7 as the maximum for the for the column and maybe minus minus 0 0.5 as the minimum here you can see that in the inspector you can see that this is the value so maybe between minus 0 0.5 and 2.7 we can create a random value between those two values for the column so we can get rid of the column go back here in the method so here we're defining the position of the new column so we want to say new column dot transform dot position is going to be equal to a new vector two and we want the position on the x-axis to be equal to the transform dot position dot x-axis of the column spawner so that's why we leave this like this because we don't want to change that and here we want a random y pos so i'm going to call this this the, the y component i'm going to call it run y pos so run y pos is going to be a variable that we're going to define at the beginning before creating the copy of the column we're going to say float run y pos is equal to random dot range so run y pos is going to be equal to a random value so random dot range is a function that will return a random value between a minimum and a maximum if I, if you hover the mouse here over range you can see that there's a, a box that appears and it says float mean float max we need to give it a minimum value so mean y max y and we haven't defined this mean y and max y we want to define them from the inspector so we're gonna make them public here at the beginning we're gonna say public float and we're gonna type in mean y so mean y comma max y like this so i have defined both variables in one line so now we want to spawn the column let's start by spawning the column at the start of the game so spawn column like this and now let's go back to the unity editor and now we can see that if we select the column spawner we can give it a mean y so for the mean y we, we want minus 0 0.5 and for the max y we want uh, we want 2.7 and now we have to give it a reference to the column prefab so go to the prefabs folder and drag the prefab to the reference to the column prefab and now if we hit the you will see that we spawn a column but we only spawn one column because we are we are only calling we are we are only calling this method from the start we want to also be able to call this method every x amount of seconds so i'm going to create a timer for that so float timer and i'm going to create a public variable of type float called max time so the idea behind this is that when timer is greater than max time we're going to spawn a new column and then we're going to set timer back to zero so here in the update method we're going to say timer plus equals time dot delta time so time dot delta time is the time in seconds uh, that each frame lasts to render so if one frame lasts 0 0.15 seconds then that's going to be the value of time dot delta time and we're going to be adding this value to timer every frame and we're going to check every frame if timer is greater or equal to max time and if it is we're going to spawn column and then we're going, to set, we're going to set timer back to zero so this is the main idea that we want to happen in our game okay so now let's go back to the unity editor and now we have a field in the column spawner in the column script in the column script we have a field for max time so let's set it to 1.5 for example and now if we hit play you will see that every 1.5 seconds we will spawn a new column perfect everything is working perfectly and everything's working the way we want it but if we pause the game we will see that there is a problem and the problem is that the that the columns don't disappear they never disappear they are created and they move to the left and they never disappear so how do we fix this we can fix this very easily by going to the move left script and here we're going to check if we are column so here we're going to say if game object dot compare tag column so if we are a column we want to destroy the we want to destroy the game object because we want to destroy the column when the column gets to this point more or less so let's drag a column just to see where we want the column to be destroyed at position minus four maybe on the x-axis maybe that's a good position for the column to be destroyed so let's delete this column we don't need it anymore and inside here we're going to say if transform.position.x is less than or equal to left limit i'm going to create a variable called left limit and then i'm going to say if this is true then destroy game object i'm going to destroy the column so we need to define this left limit so we're going to do it from here we're going to say public float left limit 
I'm gonna I'm gonna set this left limit from the editor, from the inspector, from the editor. So I'm gonna select my uh my column, and you can see that if you select your column prefab, you can see that here in the move left script you have a left limit field. So we're gonna set it to minus four. We said now we hit play. Every time the columns are at position minus four, they're gonna be destroyed. And every time they get to minus four, they are destroyed. You can see that happening in the scene. Okay, so we have, I think that for this video, it's enough. I'll see you in the next video.